Endometriosis is a common but often confused chronic illness that can be associated with painful periods and difficulty getting pregnant, but it can go years without being diagnosed. If you are curious about endometriosis, if you are wondering if you might have it, looking for symptoms, signs, wondering what to ask your doctor about endometriosis, you are going to want to listen to this episode. March is Endometriosis Awareness Month, and we need more awareness about this common and confusing chronic illness. Welcome to Baby or Bust Fertility Podcast, the podcast with interviews and in-depth discussions on all things reproductive health. It's created to support anyone curious about infertility, miscarriage, and early pregnancy. I'm your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen, a double board certified OBGYN and reproductive endocrinologist and former fertility and IVF patient myself, helping build families for almost 20 years and I'm dedicated to supporting and educating you on your family building journey. Endometriosis is a condition or a disease in which tissue that should typically only be found within the uterine cavity or within the uterine lining is found outside of the uterus. So this tissue, if you look at it under the microscope, it's, you're like, oh yeah, that looks like what endometrial lining should look like. It's very distinct, but we're not finding it in the uterine cavity. We're seeing it on top of the uterus. We're seeing it um, within the ovaries. We're seeing it on the fallopian tubes or in the pelvic sidewall or abdomen. This tissue or endometriosis tissue has been found even in other parts of the body. We still have so much to learn about endometriosis, but it's this tissue that is basically what should be endometrial lining tissue, and it's found outside of the uterine cavity. That is the basic definition of endometriosis. Now, it can be associated with a lot of signs and symptoms, and we're still trying to figure out why some people get endometriosis and some people don't. One of the you know biggest theories that, you know if you think about it, it makes some sense, but it doesn't really explain everybody's situation, is there's a theory that there's retrograde menstruation and that the fluid, when you have a menstrual flow, typically comes out of the body you know, out of the uterine lining, through the cervix, out the vagina, through the body. But if some of that fluid backs up through the fallopian tube, like retrograde and lands in the pelvis, on the ovaries, around the fallopian tubes and implants, that could explain how that tissue got there. But that doesn't really explain how it could end up in the lung or in parts of the body that are just not connected to the abdomen or pelvis. So it's just, it's not that simple. We still have a lot to learn, but it is really important to know whether or not you have endometriosis because it can explain symptoms that you're having and can really help you feel better. How common is endometriosis? The best estimate, 10% of people with uteruses and ovaries have endometriosis. It's hard to narrow down that number very well because there are some people that have endometriosis that are found incidentally, meaning they have a laparoscopy for some reason, maybe having their appendix out or something like that. And when the surgeons are looking in the pelvis, they sort of see these implants that are very distinct and are endometriosis, but that person didn't have any signs or symptoms. So there are people out there that might have it and they might not know it, and it might not impact their life. So with increasing awareness, we can learn more and people can get the diagnosis and help them with symptoms that they're having. It is important to share this. And with 10% of the population with uterus and ovaries having endometriosis, you can estimate that's over 175 million people worldwide suffering. Even though endometriosis is this common, it can often go undiagnosed for years. On average, from the time and onset of symptoms to a diagnosis, it can take seven to eight years. Why is this the case? Why does it take so long to diagnose endometriosis? Oftentimes, people will present with symptoms of pain and they can be dismissed, they can be ignored. Maybe they don't even go to the doctor because people have told them, yeah, it's normal to have pain with periods and they manage it even though they're missing work or missing school. You know, so much of the time pain can be dismissed and that is one of the most common reasons that it can go undiagnosed is that people are just not taken seriously. 
Another reason that it takes so long to diagnose is it's not that easy to diagnose. You can't do a simple blood test or even see endometriosis on imaging all the time. You can still have endometriosis even if you can't see anything abnormal on medical imaging. Really, the only way to truly diagnose endometriosis is to see it, and that requires a laparoscopy. So a little camera in the belly button where you can actually look into the pelvis, look on the ovaries, look next to the fallopian tubes, and see if you see typical endometriosis implants. Very often, um, surgeons will take a sample of the tissue that they see and send it to pathology, and has a very distinct look under the microscope of an endometriosis lesion. You don't actually have to have pathological diagnosis to get it. It can just be seeing it, you know, and a surgeon that is aware of what endometriosis looks like can say, yes, that looks like endometriosis. Let's go over the five signs or symptoms that you can look for if you're worried about endometriosis. Number one, pain with periods. The medical term for this is dysmenorrhea. Um, it is extremely painful periods. And this is often tough for people to explain to their providers as a provider. Um, I know that sometimes I've asked people if they have painful periods and they're like, oh, it's okay. And if you don't delve a little bit deeper, sometimes I'm, I'm missing out on something that's important. So things that I ask as a provider, because everybody's perception of pain is different, or sometimes people have just been dismissed by so many doctors before they come to see me or so many friends and family just to say, yep, you're supposed to have that much pain with periods. They're just so used to doctors like Kind of brushing it off they sort of like don't even try to talk about it again so i try to elicit if someone describes to me like yeah my, i get a couple i get some cramps the first day or two sometimes i take an advil but it's not interfering with my work or ability to go to school or activities i enjoy that sounds pretty typical to me but when people say things like yeah i have to take Advil around the clock or even a higher dose than what's really recommended for a couple of days where I can't function. Or yeah, I know when I get my period, I just know I'm going to miss school or work for a day or two. It's just kind of a part of my life. Or I'm in so much pain that I'm bent over and like by the toilet or like can't get out of bed. That is a lot of pain. So this pain with periods that is just limiting your activities every single cycle it happens, lots and lots of medication required to function, that is something to investigate. There are other things that can cause pain. It's not only endometriosis, but if you're having pain like that, find a doctor that will listen to you and investigate and help you with that pain because that's not okay. We will get back to talking more about endometriosis and this important topic in just a second. I wanted to take a moment to remind you just how important it is to review the show. It helps people find it and get this information. You can review the podcast anywhere you listen to it. So whether it's on YouTube, whether it's on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, anywhere you're listening, please take a second to give us a five-star review. This is a lovely review from Tess and Dot. Here we go. This is the most informative podcast I've listened to yet. Wow, that is really sweet. Not only do I learn so much about all the different aspects of fertility, but this podcast is helping me through my own emotional journey with infertility. Oh, that is my goal. It's amazing to hear someone say that in words. I'm excited to listen to the episodes I have left. Thank you for sharing this podcast, Dr. Shaheen. Thank you so much, Tess and Dot, for taking the time to say something so kind. It means a lot to me. Now, let's get back to the show. Another thing that I've seen with endometriosis is, and it's just a little kind of clue for me, is that oftentimes people will be on birth control pills before they're ready to start their family. And if you listen, it's like, well, why did you start birth control pills? Was it just for contraception or were there other reasons that people say, oh, I was having really painful periods as a teenager. And so my doctor put me on birth control pills and I felt much better. And then I kind of was using it for contraception. So I just didn't stop. And then when I stopped the pills in order to start trying to get pregnant, gradually, you know, those periods like, like I had when I was a teenager are kind of coming back and it's just getting worse and worse. And that's like a little red flag for endometriosis because birth control pills 
will actually decrease pain from endometriosis. It'll kind of keep it quiet and often help people feel a lot better so that when they stop birth control pills or even other forms of hormonal contraception, like a Mirena IUD, which has progesterone in it, progesterone only birth control pills, depo shots, which are progesterone shots that last for a long time. A lot of any sort of hormonal contraception that relieves pain. And then when you stop it, the pain comes back. That makes me think of endometriosis. The second sign or symptom that I'm asking my patients about when I'm trying to figure out if they've got endometriosis or not is I ask about pain with intercourse. Intercourse should not be painful, you know, and there's different things that can cause pain with intercourse, but pain with intercourse, that can be a sign of endometriosis. Another sign or symptom to look for that can be associated with pain when I think about with endometriosis is pain with bowel movements or urination especially around the time of the period. So when you have your period, that is when the symptoms of endometriosis can often be their worse. And so that's why some people have pain with their periods. If they have pain with intercourse, it could be more painful around the time of their period. But then also if bowel movements are really painful around the time of your period or urination is I think about, wow, I wonder if there's endometriosis lesions around the bowel, around the bladder that are getting really irritated with the hormone changes around the period, and it's causing that person pain and discomfort. The fourth sign or symptom of endometriosis can be surrounding the menstrual cycle or menstrual flow. There's a couple of things. Number one, spotting before full flow can be a sign of endometriosis. We aren't 100% sure why this happens. And it's not the case for everyone, but I will often notice that my patients who have diagnosed endometriosis will say, oh yeah, I often have a couple of days of just light spotting and then I get my full flow. So it's an association that's seen even if we're not sure exactly why. So another menstrual sign of endometriosis can be a heavy flow, like having to change period products more than every hour or two or passing clots that are larger than the size of a quarter, um, just a heavier flow. Of course, there's other reasons that can cause this, but it has been associated with endometriosis. The fifth sign or symptom or something that's associated with endometriosis can be infertility. And this is sometimes that's seen and sometimes it's not. So some people with infertility have endometriosis. Some people with endometriosis have infertility, but there are also people that have endometriosis that have no trouble having their family. And so it's not a one-to-one -one association or always associated, but anyone that I see that is taking a long time to conceive has infertility, you know, I'm helping people build families as a reproductive endocrinologist. So anyone that I see in the back of my head, I'm thinking about endometriosis. I wonder if they um, have any signs and symptoms. I'm asking about it because, you know, we don't actually know hundred percent why it can sometimes be associated with infertility. It makes logical sense to me if there are lesions of endometriosis that are causing scarring in the pelvis, it could affect the function or whether the fallopian tubes are open or not. So if the fallopian tubes can't work and pick up the egg, um, that can be an issue with trying to conceive. And so that makes logical sense to me. But there are people with totally normal pelvic anatomy, fallopian tubes are open on the hysterosalpingogram, but they do have endometriosis, yet um, it doesn't seem to be a scarring issue or a pelvic issue. And so in the field, we're still trying to figure this out. Maybe it's affecting egg quality. Maybe it's affecting implantation or hormonal communications to allow the embryo to implant. Um, so there's still so much that's not well known about endometriosis, but it can be associated with infertility. So let's recap. Endometriosis is a common condition impacting one in 10 people with uteruses and ovaries that is basically a presence of tissue that looks just like endometrial tissue. And endometrial tissue 
typically only found in the uterine lining and it's what's shed with the menstrual flow. But in people who have endometriosis, they have this tissue located elsewhere in the body. Most commonly, it's in the pelvis and abdomen around the reproductive organs, but it can be found in other parts of the body. And there's still so much we need to learn about it. It can take a while to diagnose endometriosis for many reasons. It's not a simple blood test. It's not easily seen on imaging. It requires a laparoscopy with a little camera through the belly button to see the lesions in the body to definitively and medically diagnose it. Now, sometimes people can have a strong suspicion of it and they can be treated like they have endometriosis without necessarily having to have the surgery, but that is the technical medical way to definitively diagnose it. The five signs or symptoms that can be associated with endometriosis and that should give you a clue that you should ask your doctor whether you have it or not are pain with periods, pain with intercourse, pain with bowel movements or urination, especially around the time of your period, menstrual changes that we talked about, and then infertility. ASRM, the American Society of Reproductive Medicine, has wonderful resources about endometriosis. ACOG.org, which is the American College of Obstetricians, and gynecologist has a great website with some resources. And you can look at the NIH.gov website with some more resources on endometriosis that can be really helpful. Another really important thing to learn and know is that if you have a strong suspicion that you have endometriosis and the, you talk to your doctor about it and they dismiss your symptoms, you don't feel like they're listening to you, it is okay to get a second opinion. It is okay to keep talking to somebody who will investigate your symptoms and your pain or other things that we've talked about might be due to something other than endometriosis, but you should have the investigation to figure out exactly what's going on and exactly what options are available to you to feel better. I hope you enjoyed learning more about endometriosis. It may be March, it may be Endometriosis Awareness Month, but we should be talking about this common illness all year long. People need to listen to women when they talk about pain with periods. And if you are trying to get the diagnosis, if you are talking to your doctors and your healthcare providers about pain with periods, curious if you have it, and you're feeling dismissed, if you are feeling like people are just expecting you to have painful periods and just deal with it, get a second opinion. That is what I want you to take away from today. Don't stop asking because the average time from onset of symptoms to true diagnosis and help with endometriosis is seven to eight years. And that is not the patient's fault. That is us needing to listen and the only thing that you need to do if you're worried about this is to get a second opinion and find someone that will listen to you. Find this episode and all others at my website, drlaurashaheen.com, and on my YouTube channel. Find more educational information on Instagram and TikTok. I just love teaching. Please send us an email at hello at drlaurashaheen.com. Let us know anybody you'd like us to interview any topics that you'd like us to cover, just let us know. We're excited to hear from you. Thank you to our friends at Seattle Sperm Bank and Bray's Run Production for sponsoring the show. Thank you to my producer, Shannon Perry, and her wonderful team at Audiotocracy. This is your host, Dr. Laura Shaheen. See you next week. And until then, wishing you love, luck, and pineapples. <laughs>